In the lofty Wasatch Mountains of Utah, about an hour's drive from Salt Lake City, is a popular little resort known as Alta, and its variegated snowfields provide an excellent locale for the invigorating sport of skiing in an altitude that rises to over 10,000 feet above sea level. Although we are here in the latter part of May, there is an abundance of snow on the mountaintops, and a few untiring sportsmen still linger to enjoy the remaining days of skiing before the summer sun finally melts the ski runs. Not so long ago, the only way to gain altitude for a thrilling descent was by climbing the steep slopes on foot. But in modern times, a great innovation has come to the relief of the less ambitious skiers, and it's called a ski lift. This Alta ski lift is listed among the longest in the West, and although it has only been in use for a comparatively short time, it has conveyed thousands of passengers to the ridges above, lifting them over 1,500 feet in less than 20 minutes. While most of the passengers go for skiing, there are many who just go for the ride. And well they might, for the picturesque views from the summit are well worth the trip. Pfeiffer, one of the world's champions, and Virginia Guernsey, rated among America's foremost women skiers. And while introducing outstanding personalities, we must not overlook his honor, the mayor of romantic Alta. In the boom days when Alta was a flourishing mining town, it had a fairly large population. But when the good fortunes of mining ceased, Alta dwindled into a ghost town, leaving the mayor as the only permanent resident. And here he is still striving to revive the old boom days at Alta. While the diversions of winter continue in this enchanted region, only a few miles below, in the Great Salt Lake, we find the diversions of summer in full sway. With the exception of the Dead Sea and Palestine, the water in this lake carries a higher percentage of common salt than any other large body of water in the world. And because of this, it is impossible for a person to sink. Although this young lady appears to be standing on bottom, she is actually floating in water over 20 feet deep. Another interesting example of the buoyancy of the water in this unique lake is illustrated here. A cast iron anchor is tied around the bather's ankle with enough weight to submerge the best of swimmers. But in Salt Lake, it has little or no effect in dragging the swimmer downward. This water is approximately 27% salt, which is above the saturation point, And its only animal life is a minute shrimp. Incidentally, salt through the ages has played an important part in the existence of mankind. The Romans used it for money. The word salary is derived from salt, forming part of the pay of the Roman legions. Early Ethiopians exchanged salt cakes as their coin, and Marco Polo described the importance of saline powder in the financial systems of Mongolia. Bathing in Salt Lake creates a hearty appetite, but it's a long swim to shore, and nobody in the party seems to want to go ashore. So this unique service is introduced with much success. We'd like to linger here a little longer, for the company is most pleasant. But world travelers have to keep moving, so we'll say farewell to this colorful pulchritude 
and move into shore where a world famous racer in a spectacular racing car is demonstrating for our benefit on Black Rock Beach. The driver is none other than the celebrated Ab Jenkins, to whom the world-renowned Bonneville Salt Flats owe much of their fame insofar as automobile racing is concerned. For it was he who inaugurated the first international speed and endurance contest and established the Bonneville Speedway as a tribute to the science of auto racing and the development of safety devices for safer driving throughout the world. Mr. Jenkins has broken 290 of the existing 296 world speed and endurance records. He has driven over two million miles without an accident, and although fast driving is his hobby, he says safe driving means more to him than all the speed awards in the world, and he has received more of these awards than any other individual. Here are just a few of them. Because of the deplorable number of automobile accidents, Mr. Jenkins has written many articles in the interests of safe driving, which he contends is simply efficient driving, combined with common sense. Aside from automobile racing, Ab Jenkins takes a keen interest in the unique features of Salt Lake, such as the crystallization of salt upon wire forms, as illustrated here. Although the water in which the wire is immersed is a pond from which common salt is processed, its natural source is the Great Salt Lake. In order to obtain the best results, the water must be comparatively still. Several hours later, enough salt is crystallized around the wire forms to produce these objects. This has become a popular diversion at Salt Lake, and each year contestants vie with one another in exhibiting their collections, which vary from tiny trinkets to miniature ships, airplanes, animals, and buildings. Branches of trees are also enrolled in this strange diversion, and they are transformed into fantastic shapes. And so we have witnessed a few of the diversions of Salt Lake, but there still remains a scenic thrill that never fails to gratify the lovers of natural beauty, who would gaze upon the sun as it sets over the great Salt Lake of Utah, transforming it into a palette of colors beyond the reach of an artist's dream.